Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today I'm with a very special guest, the one and only White Gold. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, yeah. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you. So when I was doing research on you, the first thing that pops up, though, when you type in White Gold, it yeah. says, I think he's from Florida, this white yes. country rapper, White Gold. How do you yes. know that? Yeah, but, <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny is that, like, um, he, I think his, like, last name is Gold. Like, his real last name is Gold. You know? So I'm like, fuck it, bro. Like, whatever. But... Yeah, um, I got my name from like a Barry White song, like he uh-huh. um, Barry White album. He made a love uh, uh, unlimited um, orchestra album called White Gold, and like I sampled something from there. And um, one of my friends was like, "Yo, like this was like very early when I was like making music for myself," and he's like, "Yo, this song is so hard. Like, what are you gonna call yourself?" And I looked at the the file name, and I was like, "White Gold." And he was like, yo, that's so fucking hard. And I was like, fuck it, man. I'm just going to go with it. Hell yeah. <laughs> it works. I like it. It's unique. Yeah. Yeah. It, we just got to we just gotta get this white gold. Because I looked, this guy, white gold, hasn't made anything for like three to four years. Yeah. So yeah. We need to wipe him off YouTube and you need to be the top search result. Yeah. Like, man. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to him, but, like, come on, man. Like, let me do my thing, man. You know, the shit that's fucked up is that, like, I it always mixes us up on, like, Spotify. So, like, every time I release something, I have to hit Spotify. I have to hit Apple Music and be like, no, the other, like, it's not, it's not him. It's me. It's me. Mm. Like, uh, it's, it's annoying, but it'll change, you know. Um, now that I'm releasing a lot of my own stuff, um, I have a specific ID thing for Spotify that like make sure that like I don't get grouped in with his shit. Like it's it's okay. I mean, it's yeah. Okay. yeah. So you also like before went by like is it B Works? I'm guessing that's how you yeah. pronounce it. I was producing under that name. So B Works is what I started making music with. Um, my actual name is Bobby. So um, I just that was like in college, like you know, just working in, in my bedroom and everything like that, like making music for my roommates. Um, I just came up with, I think one of my roommates actually came up with that. And I was mm. just like, yeah, I'll, I'll roll with it, man, whatever. Um, and then like, I use that for like my production. So like a lot of people still call me B-Works. Like right. people are, uh, you know, they, they just don't, they're people of habit, I guess, you know, creatures of habit. So I'm like, no, no, you can call me white gold. Then I, nah, I'm gonna call you B-Works. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I um, So I've only had the podcast for like a year now. And when I first started, I've already gone through like a name change and a podcast <laughs> rebranding. But then people, so people, when I first started, it was really corny, but I went by DJ Blake, right? And I wasn't even a That's DJ at the corny. time. <laughs> oh, you weren't a DJ? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. So then I rebranded to the NAST podcast and I go by NAST. Mm. And like people, like some of my first guests, because I did like 30 interviews before I changed to the cool, NAS podcast. Bad. Bad. No worries. And um, basically like, so there's still like, there's like 30 people who like, I'm still close with from the, before the rebranding and they'll still call me mm. like DJ Blake. I'm like, no, don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes it, it, old names die hard, man. But yeah. for me, like, you know, every, like most industry people know me as B-Works. You know, mm-hmm. like industry executives and all of that. They know, like, if you say B works, like they're like, all right, yeah, we know who he is. Like, just because I've just worked with so many people, I've worked with, I worked with Khaled, I worked with Ross, I worked with Wayne, I worked with Yay, I worked with M. Now I've worked with so many people. You know, Pusha T. Like, you know, I used to be managed by Stephen Victor. Like, you know, just so many different things. So, like, yeah, I made my name as a producer first, and then like. It's just a natural thing. Like, I've always been, like, a lyrics person. I don't even know how I got into production mm. first, but uh, I guess that was just what was in front of me at the time in college. Like, my roommate was, um, he was producing, and I came home from class, and he's, like, this this white dude, man. Shout out Jordan, <laughs> man. So, like, he's, he's an accountant now, like, a really successful <laughs> accountant, right? And, like, he's, like, in this corner, like, making making beats and i'm just like yo what the fuck is that he's like yo i'm making beats man i'm like how and he's like fruity loops 
Oh yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is true? I was like, could you give me that? And he was like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I'm taking this. Like I was terrible, you know, initially. And like, I stopped, like I started it and then I stopped. I was like, ah, I'm, I'm terrible at this. And then like, months later he was like yo like are you still like working on making music and i was like nah like it's just it's just too difficult you know he's like nah man you could do it you could do it so like he showed me like uh, a certain process on how to do shit and then i and then like it instantly clicked for me wow. like then i started like making music making music making music making music and like we were like you know, joined at the hip. Like we would go to like libraries. We would go to different places to get samples and shit. Like I'm talking about, man. Um, I remember one time we had. Uh, it was like we stayed up the whole night and we went to breakfast in the lower campus. And I was sitting there and I was like, "Yo, imagine if we like were producers like professionally." Wow. And I'm telling you, that's the hardest he's ever laughed in his life. Oh. He's like, that shit's not possible. Like, fuck that. Like, he was dying laughing. He's like, yo, that was all right. That's like, let's get back to the like to real life. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, lo and behold, like the shit worked, man. Wow. What'd you yeah. go to college for? I went to I went to college for economics and history. So yeah, wow. I have a bachelor's in both. Yeah. So like do you use that now? Like, I, I guess if no, you, like, wanted to... I don't use it at all. <laughs> I don't think I've used it. I used it a little bit when I got out of college. Um, I got out of college at the worst time. Like, I got out of college um, August of 08, like, during, like, the crazy financial crisis and everything. I even got to... Like, I went to work on Wall Street, uh, worked a little bit, and then the company went under. Like, company does not even exist today. Wow. You know? And then... Um, after that, I was just like, mm, I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go back to Pittsburgh. So I went to Pittsburgh, and then um, I was with my girlfriend at the time, who's my daughter's mom. And um, yeah, I just went back there. I was doing a lot of temp jobs, like fucking American Eagle. Um, now I got a job at like Best Buy or whatever, and um, I was just making it work, making it work or whatever. And then. Um, I got a job uh, at a mortgage facility, like for, for a bank. And um, that was like, that was good. Um, I wasn't really thinking about like, you know, I was still making music, but I wasn't really thinking about like having it as a career. And then a friend of mine that I used to make music with uh, became a lawyer. Uh, her name is Karen, Karen Mitchell. And um, yeah, she just hit me up and she's just like, yo, you still make music? And I'm like, yeah. And she's just like, yo, like, send me some stuff. I sent her some stuff. She's like, yo, you're so good. Like, um, at the same time, I end up catching um, catching a break because I was on Twitter and somebody put out, like, an email, like, yo, send your hottest shit. And I was like, it can't hurt, right? So I did that. And they hit me up, uh, like, months later. It was literally around the same time Karen hit me up and... He's like, yo, I got you a, a placement with Cameron. Fucking nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, shout out to J News. Like, <laughs> you know, that's like that's one of my really, really good friends, man. Like, first person that ever, like, got me a check in the industry, honestly, you know? And um, that happened, and then, like, it turned into a Young Jeezy placement. Damn. And then I was like, holy shit. And then they, like, brought me out to Atlantic. Um just all this shit like started happening and then it went like super dead, oh. you know? Yeah. And then I was just like, all right, I got a taste for it. Like now I need to like put in the work myself, you know, like you could only get so far by somebody like, you know, holding your hand. And I was just like, all right, if I really want this and I feel like I could do this, like, let me start fucking, you know, putting uh, steps in order. So then I was already like, pretty good like in the um, like on twitter and everything i had like just built a i used to be in like the not nah right comments like i had friends in there like friends that to this day you know in the not nah right comments and there was people that were on joe button's in uh you stream he was streaming okay. and like they were spamming them like yo work with b works work with b works work with b works like 
probably like 15, 20 people just spamming them, spamming them. And then he's like, yo, who the fuck is this B works I keep hearing? Like, tell him, tell him to send me, tell him to send me beats. And he played the beats live oh, shit. on Ustream. Like, this is 09, probably. Wow. Like, 09, right? And those songs end up becoming like Short Summer, Hello Expectations, uh, Thousand Faces. I end up doing six songs with Joe, right? Wow. So that was a crazy experience. I was on Moon Music 4 and everything like that. And then um, it, that led to like us doing a song on like um, All Love Lost. Um, yeah. So like it, it just, it was just like, honestly, just like putting feelers out there and just working on my craft and just making sure that I was ready when the opportunity came, you know, because it was like a five minute thing. Somebody hit me up on Twitter like, yo. Joe was talking about you in the U stream, jump in. And then I jumped in. He's like, send, send shit to this email. Boom. And that was it. Like, he was playing wow. it on the air. You know, that's as quick as it happened, you know? Yeah. So it's wow. crazy. And then, like, you know, I was also part of, like, Just Blaze's, like, community when he was uh, on the Megatron Don and stuff. Like, I have really, really good friends from there, like Sport, Ant-Man, you know, those people are, like, really, really close to me right now. And they're, like, you know, successful in themselves. Sport just did a song wow. with Rock Marciano. Uh, Ant-Man did, um, he did a song with uh, Anderson Pack that ended up winning a Grammy or whatever, wow. you know. Like, he did Prime with Royce and, uh, uh, Royce and Primo. Like, he did the samples for there. Like, really? Yeah. Like, Holy shit. Super talented. Like, I, so I'm just like, I've just been around like so many like like-minded people that are just like talented or just like waiting for their, waiting for their time, you know? And it's just like, yo, man, it, it, it's been a slow build, but it's been worth it, man. And it's like, it's dope to see like my people win and like just people that I fuck with, like genuinely and just being like, yo, like, oh man, like we used to fucking just sit in there 3 a.m., 4 a.m. talking about music and now like you're making the music that kids are going to be listening to, you know, Hell that yeah. way. It's just, yeah. So, like, as, as far as, like, music, man, I'm just in love with, like, all aspects of it, man. You got to be. It seems like you have, like, these milestones where people are like, are you still making music? And then something big would happen. That's so yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, uh, one of my good friends as well, uh, D-Dot, like, randomly out of nowhere, this was, like, I'm talking about Swiss had just won – the Grammy for on to the next one. He's like, yo, you want to talk to Swiss? Like I played him some of your music. He fucks with you. Uh -huh. And like he literally the day after, like Swiss is on the phone with me like, yo, I fuck with your music, man. Like how do you get your shit to sound so emotional? Like everything, like you pick really, really emotional shit. And I'm just like, damn, like, damn. motherfucker, you just want a Grammy. You talking to me like this. And this is all early, man. Like I don't even think that I was good enough back then. But, like, people really just, like, fucked with it, man. You know? Like, right now, I think I'm, like, way better than I was before, you know? But... You gotta be. You gotta be. You know, it's all progression, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hip-hop is just such a... It's such a big community. And, like, once you're actually part of it, it's so welcoming. And I feel like... Yeah. It's, it's, it's it really a big is. family. Yeah. And if you choose the right people, man, like, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, there's full of snakes. It is full of snakes. But at the same time, like, like I'm saying, like, if you build with the people that are around you, man, and you guys are just genuine with each other, like, it's, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Like, people, like, when, when you win, like, people are genuinely happy for you. You could feel that shit. Like, somebody hitting you up, be like, yo, I remember when we were doing this and this and this. Like, look at how far you've come. Or, wow. remember when you said this? You were like, you said you would never work with this person, but now... <laughs> Or you said you would never put 808s on a on a on a beat, and now look at you. But like now, look at how far you've come. You know, like it's just you know just little shit like that. Like just reminds you like how much you've grown and stuff too. Do you feel like people kind of feel like you came out of nowhere though? Because like your um, B works, and then now you're yeah. I mean yeah. People like people that don't know the B works. Uh, me as B works feel like I came out of nowhere but like people that know me as B-Works and have seen like me just being like just even being on social media just being regular normal or whatever and still just having stuff going on and stuff like 
they're just genuinely happy to see me like you know they're like yo like i peaked the progression like a lot of times people a lot of things that happen is that like people peg it to um my daughter because my daughter was born when all of this started happening right so like they're like yo your daughter is like 11 now and like look at the progress look how you've progressed or whatever they're like i remember when she was a baby and you were like making beats with her on your arm like you know like yeah it's crazy to see like oh man yeah it's been it's been a long 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 ass road man yeah that's that's insane yeah you have a a lot of accomplishments under your belt like whether you see it or not you know (laughs) yeah man like it's it, it you know there's some really really good moments i've had some really good moments you know working in uh with the neptunes in miami for, for the push t stuff mm. like um yeah that was that was in, that was nuts like for chad to being like chad was in the corner and like i was playing beats i was playing beats and he was like yo he ripped his headphones like he's like yo who the fuck is that <laughs> right and i thought he was mad so i'm like oh no i'm like me and I was like, yo, I'll turn it down or whatever, you know? And he was like, no, no, no. How the fuck do you get your drums to bang so hard? Wow. Like, what program are you using? And I was like, what? This motherfucker wow. really, yo, it, it was like, bro, you're like one of the most successful producers of all time. And you're asking me? Like, that shit was just surreal to me, man. It's legendary. Yeah, man, surreal. So do you think of yourself still as like a producer and artist? Are you going to switch completely over to this artist lane? Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm an artist. Like that's um I feel like when when that um switch got flipped in my brain, like I just can't go back to just being just a producer. Like mm-hmm. I have to like like even now like I make beats like but I'm not making beats just for it to just be there. Like I have to jump on it. Or if I'm not going to jump on it like I'll do a hook for somebody else, you know, like, I feel like the product isn't complete if it's just a beat, you know, it has Mm -hmm. to have words on it, you know, for it to be complete. And, um, yeah, like I make my own, I make my own beats and everything, but I still take outside beats. If I feel that shit, I feel that shit, you know, but for the most part, primarily like my sound is all my beats. Like, wow. Yeah. Do you still use FL studio then? Or what are you using? Uh, No, 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 no. (laughs) So like, Right after college, like, I think I used uh, FL Studio, like, three years. And then, like, in 09, um, I hate to, like, fucking keep shouting people out. But, like, uh, my boy Rook, he's uh, one half of Justice League. Oh, and shit. Yeah, he was, okay. he was using Logic. Um, Just Blaze was using Logic. I was in the Just Blaze, like... Um, uh, group chats and all of that um the megatron dawn stuff and i it was on my radar but not until i saw like rook using it that i was like all right now i need to like really switch like i need to switch and just like just make it a thing like i need to switch because i feel like they're like the sound that they were producing i was like i can't get that on fruity loops i mean Mm -hmm. i probably could have but i also didn't like the um I also didn't like like clicking in stuff on the sequencer and stuff like that. I wanted to be more of a player when I was making beats. So like I bought myself a keyboard. I even bought like a drum pad, which I ended up throwing out because I don't fucking use that shit. <laughs> but keyboard primarily, right? So like I taught myself how to play keys on YouTube. Wow, really? That's yeah, insane. like bro, like I like I really want this shit. Like I'm just gonna figure out a way to do it. Like I was like. I'm just going to teach myself how to play piano. Like, fuck that. I'm just going <laughs> to sit there diligently, like, practice, do all this shit. And, like, yeah, I can play fucking piano now. Um, also, yeah, like, I make all my beats with, with piano. So, like, drums and all that shit, I just learned how to do it like that. So, like, I want to, like, be able to, like, you know, tap stuff and, you know, play stuff when I'm making music instead of, like, clicking it it just feels a little bit impersonal like you know yeah for I, me. I get that yeah what is like the main daw that like most producers use in the industry um a lot of people use fl studio like hip-hop a lot of people mm-hmm. use fl studio um t minus like that guy can make a beat in like three minutes wow. like it's 
I'm talking about like full beat and like three. Hey, he's so fast and how he does it and like the sonics and how he hears shit is second to none, man. Like he just he's a wizard with that shit. Like so, it's just like like Boy Wonder also like like you know I've seen him T minus just working and the way that they work is just these guys are savants, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're just like extra special at what they do, man. But like for me, I, I don't know how to use it that good to be that efficient with it, you know? For right. me, it's like efficiency is what matters most, right? Definitely. So yeah, for me, it's just like, yeah, I want to be able to just be efficient with it. And logic is, especially when I started making, um, when I started writing and recording myself, I can do it in the same session. So like I've set it up to where the beat is at the bottom and then the vocals is at the top and I can mix in the same session. So, you know, logic for me is just the most efficient. I can just, you know, I can make a song in like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So know? like when, when, yeah. uh, when like an artist, like when a Metro Boomin or like a T minus has like a Drake or I'm not like a J Cole or a future as like the future. If you're, what does he say? The future say for Metro Boomin? It's like, Oh, Metro Boomer wants some more? Oh, if young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you? Yeah, like... Oh, like those, a tag, right? Yeah, if, 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 if they use a tag for a beginning of a song, does like does an artist get paid every time they um, use that? No, or how no, does that no, work? no, no. You just get paid. You just get paid off the production. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, does Future get paid every time? Maybe, say that? But, like, the only time, like, you know, artists use that is when they've produced, like, the producer has produced on it, you know? Okay. Yeah, so I mean the the producer is obviously getting paid for the beat, so mm-hmm. the tag just is part of the beat. Oh yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. So if you do produce now, like, is, are you just going to use white gold, or do you still use B Works at all, or is B Works um, just the past? I, I had a thing of where like I wanted to use like B Works, like produced by B Works, and then artist white gold but i don't know we'll figure it out once i start releasing shit but primarily it's probably just gonna be white gold you know yeah. i don't know man maybe <laughs> i'm think, just like still like figuring that shit out you know think about I don't this want way. It to be too confusing to where it's just like you know what are you doing you know like just stick with one name you know i guess like think about it this way like white gold's gram is nominated for a grammy b works yeah. isn't <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly so i don't know we'll see we'll see yeah but i mean speaking of grammy nomination i got nominated for one with uh with royce man for the best rap album the allegory that's that came out of nowhere such a blessing man such yeah a blessing. that is crazy do you feel like is it just like all the work you, that led up to it that made you meet yeah, Royce, or is it just like it, time and place? Yeah, it's just, and it's it's just crazy because like um, I met Royce like years before through his. I know his manager really well. Uh, his manager used to art, uh, manage one of my best friends, uh, Zach Wilson, and um, so we've just been cool since like for years, you know. And um, I had put a song on SoundCloud. It was like a freestyle. I think I did, um, oh man, it was some it was some Drake shit that I did a freestyle over, right? Oh, um, 4 a.m. to Calabasas or 4 okay. p.m. to Calabasas, whatever. Um, and he heard it and he was like, yo, like, you know, you still make music. I'm like, <laughs> you know, again, <laughs> again, bro. <laughs> Again, he's like, yo, you still make music? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, why wouldn't I? Like, why does everybody keep asking me that? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And he's like, I want you to work with Royce. Like, Royce heard it. He fucks with you. Like, I want you to come to Detroit and just, like, work on it. But as an artist, and I was like, whoa, this is the first time, like, somebody wants me to work as an artist, you know? And, like, that's why, I like, for me, like, I credit Royce with just, so much of my success now is just because he's like believed in me as an artist before anybody did you know and as far as like big big people like the people around me like you know I had a lot of friends that believed in me but like for someone that's not in my that wasn't in my camp and just was like yo I recognize you as an artist like that's that was special to me you know and I was just like all right would like I went um I worked with them like it was like right after Thanksgiving two years ago. I worked with them. Wow. Um, 
Then I went, like, it was like, I went for like three days or something like that. Then I came back. Then I went in January of 2019. Was it 2019? I don't remember, bro. But wait, was it January? Yeah, January 2019. January 2019, right? It was snowing. We were having a conversation. It was like a long conversation. And You Gonna Learn was playing. Like the beat was playing like maybe for like an hour and a half. Like we were just talking. And then like fi finally like my ears clued into it. And I was like, yo, this shit is hard. Like let me put <laughs> something on it. And he was like, all right, here, yeah, take it. And so I took it to the next room. Like 15 minutes later, I did You Gonna Learn. Um, he came in, you know, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is hard, this is hard. He's like, yo, just change that one, change one line, man. Like it's, it's almost there, it's almost there. Change one line. And then um, I think the, um, I feel like the, you ain't so your last rock, you just better earn was the last line that I put in there. And then, um, fucking sounds dope. That song, is yeah. And then I was just like, God. and then after I did it, he was like, "Yeah, this shit's fire." So it was supposed to, it was supposed to be for him, you oh. know. Um, it was gonna be me. I have a verse on it, like, and that's on Emin that's on Eminem's album, right? Or is that yeah, on it's okay. on "Music to Be Murdered by Side A." Um, but like the funny thing is, like he hadn't put his verse on it or anything. Um, so he played uh, Eminem just my uh my hook with the beat and m heard it and was like what the fuck is that uh, like, i need that he was like i need that like give me that shit please wow. he was like please give me that and then he was like bet i'm gonna give it to you but i'm gonna put a verse on it so that's wow. when you put a verse on it and yeah and that became fucking um you gonna learn you know mm. and then uh so like I found out in like June. So like it happened in June. I found out in June, and um, they, um, Royce's manager called and was like, "Yo, I got good news and bad news. Like, what do you want to hear first? And I was like, "The bad news first. And he was just like, "Yo, um, bad news is like, yo, you gonna learn is not gonna be on Royce's project, man. Sorry about that, bro." And I was like, "Nah, you know, it's all good. Like, I'm used to disappointment as far as." <laughs> Yeah, because, like, this industry, there's so many no's. You get told no so many times, bro. Yeah. yeah. And then he was like, yo, but good news is it's going to be on Eminem. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Fucking I was shit. like, what? Get the fuck out of here. Like, immediately, though, like, I was just like, when is the album coming out? And they were like, yo, there's no timeline for it um, in the fall. And I was like, oh, fuck. Mm. You know, because you know how artists, like, they'll record a bunch of shit. And if they do something too early, they tend not to use those tracks. So you don't want to get on the project too early, mm -hmm. you know, because then they'll play it and they have ear fatigue and whatever. But, yo, true enough, man. Like, he just, like, loved it, man. And then it's just like, oof. Wow. I was like, wow. So it was like, I guess one of the first songs that he did for Music to be Murdered by. So you knew about the album before, like, any fans or anyone basically? Oh, yeah, knew. way before, way before. I had to That's keep crazy. that shit quiet for six months, bro. That must have been kind of hard, man, working with Eminem. It was hard as oh. fuck to do. Because, like, I'm like, you know what? I thought about it like this. I'm like, if I tell anybody, I'm going to jinx my spot on the album. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I just had myself in the mind frame of that. So I'm like, if I tell anybody, I'm going to jinx myself. So just don't tell anybody. Put it out your mind. You know, go about your shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's dope. You it was literally on Music to Mur Be Murdered By and then the Allegory? Or which one came out yeah, first? Yeah, so, like, so they kind of coincided at the same time. So, like, um, once I found out that I, I was I was working on Allegory, right? I was working on, in that January, we were working on Allegory. So I did a Hero at that time. Um, and then um, he brought me Black Side. He, like, he called me on FaceTime. And when Royce calls, it's like a three-hour conversation because he's just going <laughs> to rant. He's going to rant about something, you know? Yeah. And he had watched something about Dave Chappelle talking about taking Black wealth out of the U.S. and taking it back to Africa or something like that. And so that was my mind frame when I, when I did uh, Black, like my verse on Black Savage. And um, so he did, uh, he talked to me for like two hours and then he was like, all right, so I'm going to send you a track. 
and you're going to put a hook on it yeah. <laughs> about this. And I was like, oh, I bet. So that was like, uh, I probably like August. Yeah, probably like August. And like, the thing about Royce is that like, he'll call you at any time, bro. <laughs> like any time. And he knows, like, it's funny because if he sees that I'm not in front of a computer when I like answer, he's like, oh, that's weird. Not you're not, good. you're not in front of a computer. You're not making music. And I'm like, bro, like, I don't make music all the time. Oh my God. Like, he's just, he's always getting on me about that. He's like, you're always fucking ready, you know? But like, I usually try to like send any kind of like shit back. Like, if he requests something, I just try to send it back the day of or the next day. Like, just, yeah. just so like, you know, just to be prompt and everything like that. I don't like like holding. They noticed that though. That's important. Yeah. Like, and he, he really, he even said that. He was just like, Yo, I appreciate you always like being prompt with like you know everything like that, and I was just like you know that's that goes a long way, you know. Yeah, that that song Black Savage on the Allegory album is insane. He got C yeah, High, got, Ti, like yeah, like that shit was crazy. And then it was like the NFL song of the uh, thing of the month for November. Oh wow! Yeah, so it played every single NFL, um, uh, every single NFL game that played. Wow. They played that on TV. They played that every Sunday, every Monday night football. They played that. That's that crazy. was insane for me, man. Like people still hit me up about that shit. And I'm just like, wow. You know, and that's the first music video I ever did. Like we did that shit in Calabasas. Like, oh man, it, it was crazy experience, man. Yeah. Royce has been, yo, Royce has like, <laughs> literally given me like a fucking has cleared my path, bro. Like, He's popping oh, off right like, now, too. Yeah, and he's not afraid to just be like, yo, like, I, you know how some people will be like, oh, you're dope in private, and then, like, not pretend that they don't know you, like, in public? He's not afraid to just be like, yo, this guy is fucking talented, bro. You know, yeah. like, he's not afraid to do that shit. And it goes a long way because people listen to what, you know, he says, you know, and that's helped a lot, you know? Yeah, he took you to the even he even took you to like the Sirius XM um interview. Yeah. That shit's dope. Bro, he's like, yo, I'm in town. You busy? I'm like, no. He's like, all right, come to Sirius. That's literally like, bro, he just <laughs> bro, he's he's the he's the best, man. Honestly. Wow. Yeah, Which yeah. album did you did you like Book of Ryan or the Allegory better? Uh, like Bro, for me, Book of Ryan is so personal for him. I mm -hmm. love that, but the allegory speaks to what times that we're in it's almost prophetic yeah. man is that that's why i feel like it's like so warranted that he got the grammy nomination because like we're dealing with we're dealing with everything that he's been talking about and he wrote that shit a year before like the george wow. floyd stuff like all of that shit was like a year before so he it felt like he just knew that something mm -hmm. was gonna happen that was just gonna like blow a lid off this of society man like he just had that you know it, it was just palpable man like it, it felt like you know when Kendrick made to pimp a butterfly you know like yeah like the times that we were in like you know it, it just oh man like it just speaks to society right now man and it's just like prophetic man very prophetic and the songs are fucking incredible Damn. like like yeah. and he did the beats. He did all the beats, man. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, like that's his first time doing like uh, beats for his album. Like he did all the beats, man. I, I like I literally saw him like going through samples and like doing drums and yeah. you know he was like he was like he was telling me how he would just like call Primo and be like, "Yo, how do you do this on this? I'm like, how do you do that?" <laughs> and then like Primo insane. would like teach him on that. Like it's crazy, you know? Like just. You know, just uh, not approaching it as a producer, but just approaching it as somebody who wants to get a product done, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's refreshing, you know, to approach it from that. You might hear different things. It might be, you know, like, all right, so go back to like something like that. Like Havoc would always talk about how he would leave imperfections in the beat and in the songs because that's what made him, you know, quirky. And that's what drew people to it. Like, so like... Royce being like, all right, I'm not going to chop this 100% like, you know, fine to where it's like super fine tuned, but like, you're going to feel it. It's almost like what Kanye does, like Kanye does shit and it's not perfect, but like, it has a feel to it, you know, 
Like the drums may not be a hundred percent perfect, but like it just gives you enough of that human element that you're just yeah. like, oh man, this is amazing. Oh, God, yes, you know, yes, yeah. And the thing about the album, it's not like a um. There's a difference between trying to like make an impact on society versus mm-hmm. trying to monetize on what's happening in society. You know? Yes, yes, yes. And it feels like for me, like he's not preaching. He's not preaching. He's just pretty much holding up a mirror to society. Like, yo, this is this is exactly who you guys are. This is who we are as black people, where we're at. You know, we need to do better. And then everybody else needs to do way better because this shit is fucked up. Our people, we'll deal with our problems within ourselves. Like we don't have, we don't need white people commenting on black people's problems. We don't need y'all talking about black on black crime or Chicago. Like, you know, people, there's so much like, you can't, you don't, don't talk to me about Chicago. Mm -hmm. That Chicago is Chicago. Let Chicago people deal with that and let them do what they have to do with that. Like, don't comment on us. Don't comment on black culture as a whole and saying that like, all right, what we're doing is exacerbating the problem. That's not, you know, address what you guys have done with slavery and systematic yeah. oppression and how that compi- that compounds year after year, year after year, year after year. You know, people talk about compounding interest. Like, think about that as far as like compounding trauma, mm-hmm. you know, like it's just exponential trauma that has gone back hundreds of years, you know, yeah. and to undo all of that, it just takes time, you know. It's, it's called crazy. it's called post traumatic slave syndrome. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. So yeah, like uh, all of that is in there. Just like you know, um, he had um, a skit where I forget the guy's name, but the guy's teaching his daughter like um, like life skills, like you know how like how to like um, how to use guns. Um, teaching her about law, teaching her about civics and all of that, just in case, like, you know, he dies or whatever, like, she has all the tools necessary, like, you know, and I feel like those those things are important, especially as Black people to teach each other necessary skills, not tertiary skills that, you know, like, are not everybody has to be an artist, you know, not everybody has to be an artist. Like, we need plumbers. We need electricians. All that shit makes the world run, man. Like, how are you going to have a fucking society without an electrician? Yeah. Who's going to who's gonna install that elevator in that building? <laughs> who's going to install the lights? Like, how are we going to get running water? You need a plumber. How, like, all those people are important. And I feel like just because people don't make them sexy jobs, that like people feel like oh they're not desirable like most of the time some of these electricians have way more money than rappers yeah holy shit they do (laughs) like i'm talking about you know they have way more money and they have job security Mm -hmm. everybody's everybody's gonna need an electrical problem one one time or another you know electricians don't have to deal with like rap beef or anything like that at all none of that (laughs) And they could they could buy the same shit. Like if he electrician wants to buy a Rolex, let him buy a Rolex. Like he yeah, could, like he could do all that shit without the stupid rapper beef, you know. So rap isn't necessarily like the most, um, you know. It it is. It's not the end all be all. You know, mm-hmm. rap isn't the end all be all. You know, sports isn't the end all be all. Like there's so many things. Like you know, Rich Paul, you know, is an agent. Like Maverick Carter is a, is a manager. Like there's so many dope people that are doing things as business owners. And like, I have to make it known that like black women are the ones that get that shit. Like black women get that shit. Like you have people doing uh, businesses out from their living room. They're doing like uh, skin products. They're doing hair products. They're doing uh, weave stuff. They're doing, um, I don't know. They're doing any and everything. And like black women are enterprising and that shit's amazing to watch, man. Like, it's just so dope to see. Like, I just love it, man. Like, and I feel like the more we champion shit like that, the more it's going to be like, all right, that's normal. You oh, know? Yeah. That's normal. Like, oh, I don't have to be a rapper to be, to have clout. So to yeah. speak. I could change my community and that could give me the clout that I, that, uh, that I so desire or whatever. And it's helping people, you know? Yes. And like, yeah, like I feel like that's, and then like, you know, you can enjoy entertainment for the people that give you entertainment, but then that's that of it. Like not everybody needs to be that. 
Right. Mm-hmm. I, I feel that. I feel like when Royce drops his next album, if he has one coming out, we got to review it together. We're doing oh, like an album. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I don't even know, but like he's always working. But like right now, I feel like he's just been so, um, he's been so galvanized by everything that's going on. And gotta like, be. Yeah, like he's his focus is just so much on just trying to help right now. Yes, like trying to help and just trying to give information so that people can just do better. You know. Yeah, even like how he handled the. Have you been keeping up with the Benzino beef in him? Oh, uh, says, oh that's just just like. Come on, like you just like you just trying to just muddle the, you just trying to muddle the talking points of where we need to be, you know we need to be moving as a unit, man. Like you, like you criticizing Eminem is like why, like it it doesn't even matter at this point in time. I get it, you had your beef with them or whatever, but like does it matter at this point in time? Like shouldn't we be focused on how we're supposed to like help each other like i don't get it man like it's just like you know falling back into like dumb shit bro like guys are like we're old bro yeah guys like over 40 years old like Like, seriously like yo you just gotta like yeah how can you move past this shit and just like do better like like it doesn't have to always be about fucking negativity within the community you know like it just doesn't, man. Like being positive and having all that shit, it just that trumps everything, man. And it just opens up avenues for more people, man. You gotta stop thinking about yourself. You gotta start thinking about more people, man. That's that for me is the big part of things. It's just like we're just in such a society that is an individualistic society. And it's all about how can I get this done? How can I do this? How can I do this for myself? And it's like nobody stops to think about, yo, how can I help? somebody else that you know it'll help them but then like i know that it's going to galvanize them to help other people as well you know and that shit's infectious like people think that like negativity is so like powerful and it is but positivity is also powerful as well you know it's just the fact that positivity doesn't have the face that negativity has right you know you can be positive with someone you can smile at someone right like in in my religion in Islam, like smiling at someone is a good deed. You know, you get hasanats for it. Like that's a that's a good deed, right? And smiling, yo, that could literally change somebody's like whole thing of like, yo, I got some, this person smiled at me, said hi, man, let me go get a smoothie yeah. or something instead of let me go get a burger that was gonna kill him. You know, or you know, you never know. Have just, you, that's um, just a random like you know thing, but you never know. Have you seen a uh, Monsters Inc? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they start out in the movie, like they get power from making kids cry and have nightmares, and then at yeah. the end of the movie, they're like, "How about we make these kids laugh?" And then like the world's run on laughter. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like yo, if you change it, it will change. Like there's yo, there's nothing that says that positivity doesn't work. But there's nothing that says that people think like negativity is the only way to get attention or, you know, shit like that. Like, but there's so many people, there's a lady that I see on Twitter all the time. Like there's videos of her where she's giving out um, bags to the homeless people. Right. And uh, she's doing it from her car. Right. During, during COVID and she's doing it from her car and the homeless people are coming and she's like, Oh, what do you want? Like, do you want like, um, like a Debbie cake or whatever. And they're like, just whatever you want. She's like, no, you're like, make a choice. She's like, and the guy was like, oh, beggars can't be choosing. She's like, you're not a beggar. You're just somebody in like, that fell into an unfortunate situation. Choose, you know, just humanizing that person right there. Like, bro, that like, that, that, what does that even cost you to give that, that goodness to someone? It doesn't cost you much. Especially when it's divided times. Like you need to be, you need to yeah. be nice like that to people. So. Yeah, man. So I'm. That's what I'm about, man. Like, you know, I've I've been through so much negative shit, bro. Like, I grew up in the projects, bro. Like, motherfuckers shooting out. I seen the first. I seen my dead body at nine years old, bro. Mm. Like, bro, my my friends, crazy. You know, like I just been through so much shit. But like, making it out of it, like, just. just 
I don't know, it just showed me that, like, yo, like, there's so much more to this world that, like, you can yearn for, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, Royce even, like, I feel like at a certain extent you do kind of need to post things on social media, but, like, how he handled it on social media was very positive, too. Yeah, like, he's like, yo, I don't want to beef with you. Like, yeah. he just started making a laughing matter and just been like, yo, like, leave me alone, like, you know? And Benzino was, like, super mad, like, he taped something in his car where he's just like cursing up a storm and i'm just like bro that just making that's giving you stress right now yeah. like you're stressed out driving you know <laughs> like stressed out driving and cursing into a camera like yeah come on bro <laughs> overall it overall it has to be for the like just the attention right now because like yeah, Royce I mean, and I, Emma are both I'm popping pretty sure off. it is but like yeah. you know give your attention to your daughter who's an amazing artist like coyler ray like that's his daughter? That's his daughter. How did like, I not know that? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, like, give your attention to her. She's amazing. Wow. You know, she's doing she's doing a lot of shit. I love her, man. Like, I love her. Like, I, I just be listening to her shit, and I just be like, man. My favorite song is, like, she has a song with um, Ski Mask on the Spider-Man out. The Spider-Man, um, you know that cartoon Spider-Man movie that came out recently? Yeah, the, Into the Spider-Verse. Into the right? Spider-Verse. The yeah. soundtrack is actually insane. She has a song with him called Save the Day. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that song was fire. Yeah, insane. like, so, like, yo, like, you have a daughter that's doing positive shit right now. Like, wow. amplify that, you know? Amplify that, like, shit like that. I don't know. For me, it's just, like, I don't see the use in just being mad about shit that you can't even control, man. Like, mm -hmm. you can't control that shit. You, you're not going to control how Royce and Eminem are friends. They're friends. Mm -hmm. you know of course he's gonna speak up for his friend like what else do you like wouldn't you want your friend to speak up for you like whatever oh, yeah. man like leave it at that bro it's crazy yeah. to me. so i have a friend who's like an up-and-coming artist from the seattle area mm. and um he's muslim as well mm. and for him it was very hard for him to like tell his family about it because they're like so against it they're like there's no money in it what does that have to do yeah, with our religion I mean, whatsoever like yeah, how did I mean, how did you like, handle like how has uh, that affected like, your well, religion I, I mean i i became muslim like last year right oh wow yeah so i'm i'm a revert right but i'm african so i understand him so like my family absolutely did not approve like i mean like my grandmother um friction since the beginning like yo well, fucking you're a bum bro like all this stuff and it's just like i knew like what i wanted to achieve but like i knew that it was going to come with like days where i just really would not have any money you know and i didn't want to do anything illegal i'm like yo i got a daughter like bro like you just gotta focus i'd rather be broke now and work my way to what i gotta do and all the shame that comes with it all the criticism that comes with it whatever you know like i had to like really prepare myself mentally for that shit and it you know there are days where i was just like man like let me just quit and just like get a regular job let me use my degree you know but and then was, someone like, will hit you up and be like you make yeah, music like, still? <laughs> make music? <laughs> it's true because yo i was in i was in michigan with my dad right i was in lansing like um this was 2017 and um my dad had just had quadruple bypass surgery and yeah 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 so it was he was a recovering i was um i was around for him doing his like physical therapy and everything like that and i was like you know what let me just get a regular job here and just stay for a while and then at the la i went on interviews like i went on interviews and then uh, i got offered a job and then at the last minute I was like, nah, I'm not doing that shit. Damn. I was like, I'm coming back to New York. And then when I when I made that decision, the next day, my boy Cameron hit me up and was like, yo, I got this girl for you. Like, you got to develop her, man. Her name is Sophia. Like, she's like my little sister, man. Like, um, so uh, her name is Sophia Massa. She's a pop artist, like amazing okay. pop artist. Like, she just got signed like a year and a half ago. Wow. Um, still developing and everything like that but she's so dope her voice is so big and bro she's like she's just amazing you know love her to death like but like 
that's that's when it, I was just like, all right, man, I'm gonna come back to New York. So I came back, had a session with her, and we hit it off. Like immediately, I was like, all right, I vibe with her. Like we're yeah. we're definitely gonna make uh, some good music. So like, yeah, that I made that decision. And I was just like, fuck it, man. I'm just gonna keep doing the music, and then everything panned out. Like I could literally be answering fucking uh, calls right now for like mortgages and oh my just, God. that. That would have been lame as fuck. <laughs> and think about this way. Not only does this music help you, it helps your listeners and your audience as well. Yeah, right? yeah. And that's how I the try impact. to look at it too. And like, and that's what drives me to just not do like, uh, um, just not try and do like surface level shit. Like even if it's, I'm, even if I'm talking about women or anything like that, like I'm talking about, you know, shit that like the anxiety that's brought on about me not being able to be with you know the person that I love currently you know mm -hmm. or you know the joy that I feel like when we first you know we first clicked and like you know we clicked over like books you know and you know just stuff like that like real stuff that like people are just gonna be like oh yeah like I can identify with you know this message you know yeah it could be fun you know i have a song called only fan that one day i'll release but like you know it's just it's fun but like at the it's still got to be authentic and it's mm -hmm. still got to be real there has to be some kind of truth in there um i have a song coming out on the fifth called many faces and Shit. it's just basically it's a short song but it's basically a song that's about having relationship problems with different women, like the, like different women, you know, but mm -hmm. the same relationship problems and, you know, all those many faces, like as those faces change and those problems stay the same, maybe the problem isn't with the women, it's probably, it's with you. Damn. Yeah. Damn, growth. That's what everyone yeah, needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what made you decide to convert to Muslim? Is um. Like Man, I had been so like I had been like reading it. I had friends that were Muslim that would always be like, you know, like little things here and there and be like, yo, you, you know, like you, you kind of live your life like Muslim. Like you, you have, you know, your morals and ideals are intact with and in line with a lot of uh, Muslim ideals. Like, you know, you're a stand up person, like, you know. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to look into it. I kept postponing it. I kept postponing it. And I hadn't been Christian for 12 years, like right after college. Like I just knew like for me, like Christianity just had too many questions that people weren't willing to answer. Like they were, yeah. they were, you know, being like, don't question it. Don't question God, blah, 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 all this shit. And I'm just like, hmm. God gave us curiosity. Yes. <laughs> you know, like yes. <laughs> he, he wouldn't just say don't question them, you know. Even if, even if it was something that it was like, you know, something that you wouldn't question is like, all right, who made God or whatever because he exists outside of our time and space and time construct. So mm -hmm. that doesn't apply to him, but just normal questions people were just not willing to like, you know, delve into it. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to find out what I believe. So I set up on a journey, um, metaphysics, uh, Kabbalah, um, just so many different things of, you know, just studying and just trying to figure out. And I got pieces of what I think is the truth, and, but nothing that was like full picture, right. you know? And it wasn't, and I, I knew in the back of my head, cause like when I was in school, um, I was in Ghana for three years. I was in Ghana for three years. My mom came and got me like from 98 to 2001. So I spent three years there. And one of the classes that I did was religious and moral education. And Islam was one of them. So they taught us about it. And it's always been in my head. Like mm. I could never shake it. Like it's always been in the back of my head. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get to this one day. You know, I'm going to get to this one day. And um, when it came up, I was just like, oh, man, I know I'm going to have to change my life. I don't know if I should look into it now because I know if I do believe it, I'm going to have to change my life. And it's not going to be my life's not going to be fun anymore. <laughs> like, you know, because I was also like a victim of media portrayal of like, you know, 
Muslims are the strictest people ever and you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, like all of that, you know? And so uh, when I started like looking into it, I was like, man, this is the truth. You know, this is the truth. Like I couldn't deny it. Like I just read it and I was just like, yeah, I know why I was waiting because I knew this was the truth, Mm. you know? And like, I just kind of kept it quiet. I just kept it with me and a couple of, uh, of my friends. And I was just like trying to learn more, learn more, learn more. And then um, um, a good friend of mine came into the, came into the picture um, and she was, um, she was kind of like the catalyst for it. Um, she was just like, yo, if you like feel like, you know, you want to do this, then do it, you know, like, you have to and then my mom also like was really really instrumental because she she um used to work on a container ship like and everything like that um and um so she dealt with so many people that were like muslim and everything like that and she was just like yo every muslim that i that i interacted with that was uh that i worked with or whatever stand up people great people so like if this is what you believe i think you should do it because you know, the similarities are there, you know, there's some differences, but, you know, I know that, like, it's the same God, you know? Hell yeah. Yeah, so she was, like, she was, like, my biggest, like, you know, and she's Christian, like, you know, and she had the pom-poms out for me, man, like, she's, like, yo, she was, like, sending me shit, and I'm just, like, yo, you do know that you're Christian, and she's just, like, no, but I feel, like, she's, like, I feel it that, you know, like, you know, you believe this, like, I have to support you, you know, yes. I have to support you, man. Yes. And I, my mom's going to be Muslim one day. Like, I already know it. Like, the way that she's that she's acting and the way that she moves, I know she's going to be Muslim. It's just a matter of time. Man. I'm going to convince her, man, matter of time. But, yeah, like, she's the biggest reason that I, like, I made it official and I took Shahada and everything like that. Yeah, and it was just, like, it's the truth. My life didn't even change that much. Like, drinking... I used to drink like probably twice a year. My birthday, my friend would come and take me out. Uh, my friend Binyam, like uh, he would come and take me out and we would like go get drinks or whatever. Or it was like St. Patty's where I would like hang out with people. But like after college, like I didn't really drink that much. Like it's not, it wasn't something that was like. It's smart though not to, you know. Yeah, like it wasn't something that was like from my, it, it wasn't something I needed for my lifestyle, you know. And then, yeah, so like when when that came, like it was just like, all right, you know, I guess not. The thing that I really miss is fucking pepperoni. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. That's like the hardest shit. It was like, I don't really like pizza anymore because like I can't have pepperoni. Damn. And nothing like the turkey pepperoni doesn't taste like regular pepperoni. Yeah, it does not. It's trash, you know? Mm. But, you know, uh, whatever, man. Tiny, tiny sacrifices. Tiny, yeah. tiny sacrifice to make, you know? Hell yeah. you know? And I don't regret it. Like, I, bro, my life has just gone crazy, like, positive, you know, ever since. Like, you know, I, I just... I, I can't ever see myself not being Muslim, man. Like, it's like, uh, that's my identity. I'm a Muslim yeah. first, man. Yeah. It's part of your journey, you know? It's a, yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. So what have you learned about yourself over this whole, like, pandemic, quarantine deal? Oh, Eight man. months now? I nine learned months. that I'm a fucking anxious-ass person. Wow. Yeah, I learned that, like, I don't have as much patience as I think I, uh, I, think I do. Like, I thought I had a lot of patience, and people think I'm patient because I'm not vocal about shit. Like I, I'm, I'm able to be like reserved as far as like um, not having an impetus to like nag people or something like, like that. But like in my head, Oh man, I overthink a lot. So like, mm. yeah, man. So like, I just learned that like, man, I need to work on that shit. Like I really do need to work on it. And um yeah, everything else though, like I just learned that like I'm blessed, man. Like mostly positive, man. A lot there's some people that died from COVID around me, but for the most part, my family is blessed, man. My family has been able to like, you know, 
kind of like, you know, go, go away scot-free from this, you know? And mm -hmm. my loved ones, my friends, like everybody is doing really, really well. So yeah, I'm, I'm just blessed, man. And I just like, um, I just feel like I need to be more appreciative of where I'm at and things that happen to me instead of looking so far in the future every single time that something happens. Cause like when uh, You Gonna Learn came out, like I had this like anxiety pour over me because I was just like, what do I, like now I need to do this. I need to make move, I need to do this. And, and it became like such an anxious thing for me that like, it was just like, you ruined the moment of just yeah, live in the moment. M album. Yeah, like I just should have just been happy for myself. And it was just like, I was just like, I was the opposite. Like I was just like dreading it and everything. I was just like, mm. but like now when Zeus came out and like the outpouring of love came out, bro, I have like thousands in my, in my Instagram messages. And like, I try and get through them and then it just keeps reloading and reloading like, I'm trying, like, anybody that's listening that's, like, in my Instagram DMs, like, I'm trying, man. Yeah, but, Zeus took you, took, you, took you to another level for sure, man. Yeah, 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 Zeus just, like, you could feel that, like, all right, this is different. This is, like, this is different. You know, you going to learn is amazing. Like, it did, it did really well, but, like, I feel like people were waiting to see if I could do it again. Yeah, and you, you know? did. And when they heard Zeus, they were like, oh, shit. All right, this dude is nice. <laughs> how was the recording session for that? Was that like a while after you did You Gun Learn, or how did that happen? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was July. That was July, and I was in, uh, I was literally here. This is my cousin's basement. I was literally here, and um, I was on FaceTime with T Minus, and we were That's just, dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were just talking. Like, he's a really good friend of mine. Like, for the most part, we don't even talk about music. Like, I've known him for years. And we don't even work on music like that. Like he'll send me stuff, and then like I'll I'll mix uh, I'll I'll um, jump on it. But like for the most part, it's just like yo, like that's the homie, you know. Like like I just love him as a person. I love his family. Like you know, we talk about our kids primarily. We talk about you know relationships and stuff like that. But um, he was congratulating me on you gonna learn. Uh, again, he's like, yo, like I, like, I finally had a chance to, like, really listen to it. Like, you sound really good, man. Like, I love yeah. that shit. And I was like, yo, I bet you I could get you an Eminem placement, though. And he was like, no, no, you can't. And I was like, wait, you've never worked with him, have you? He's like, nah, man. Like, I, like, I would love to. Like, that'd be, that'd be nice. And I was like, bro, send me, like, send me, like, five beats you think it would be good for Eminem, bro. Just send me five. And he sent me five. The first one was Zeus. And I was like, yo, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm gonna call you back. I'm gonna call you back. So I got off. I did, I came up with that shit in like five minutes, bro. Recorded it in 15 minutes. And then I sent it to him. He was like, holy shit, this this sounds like it could be for M. And I was like, I'm sending it. I was like, I'm sending it. So I sent it. Uh, Royce was like, yo, this is fucking crazy. He'd be a fool not to take this shit, you know? So I went to sleep, woke up, woke up to a text like, yo, he loves this shit. Like, um, uh, Roy sent me a screenshot of M being like, yo, is that for me? Like, this shit is crazy. Yeah. Is that white gold? Yeah. And then, um, like, two hours later, um, M gave word like, yo, um, I'm done with the verses, like send the, send the stems. Like we're ready to mix the record. Song happened in less than a day, bro. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That was crazy. So how did you think of like the hook for that? Like, I know you play homage to rap God and is, am yeah. I reaching to say that you did, it was for monster as well, or it's just monster. Just yeah, happened it was, to be it, for me, like um, it's monster Rihanna, but like, I, I didn't want it to be that obvious because that that was the most obvious one. I was saying monster for uh, the Juice World when he says monster on Godzilla. Yeah, so yeah, so that was the whole thing. Like it is all three songs, but like primarily, I just wanted to pay a little homage to Juice World because you know his untimely demise, man. But yeah, dude. That's yeah, but for me, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Um, how I came up with it, 
out of thin air, bro. Honestly, like right. it just I just feed off of what the beat gives me. And I think me and Royce like had talked about like months before we had talked about like the unique position that M's in right now as far as like you've done everything. Now people are turning on you after you've done everything. So like where does that leave you? Like, you know, it leaves you lonely as fuck, you know? So, like, I always had it in my head that I'm like, I'm going to write a song that's, like, going to be based on, like, just being lonely as far, but not in, like, a sad way, just being lonely as far as, like, I earned this spot that, like, you guys are saying that I don't deserve now. Like, I earned this shit, mm. you know, and you guys have rewarded me for it for the most part, you know, now you want to take it away from me, you know, uh, it's a Jay-Z lyric, like, Jay-Z is my favorite artist, but, like, there's a Jay-Z lyric that says, the same sword they knight you, they gonna good knight you with. Mm. You know, like incredible, right? So that's literally like what was in my head. I was like, yeah, this could probably be like that one, man. And then, and I was just like, I be on my own, uh, head up in the clouds like Zeus. When they say you went the goat, I come down like who? Oof. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, man, I, I should, I should really make it a point where I'd be like who? So I was like, I come down like who? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like, oh. I tried to make it, like, a point, like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to, you know? Like, oh like I earned this shit, you know? Dude, that was, like, the highlight of, like, the whole album. That yo, song was insane. Everybody, everybody's been telling me, like, yo, that's, like, the fucking highlight of their shit. They're like, yo, this hook is so crazy. I gotta plug in this shit so my MacBook doesn't die. Um, I think they're like, yo, this shit is so crazy that like i don't know it's just like it's a feature that like everybody is just like yo this is dope you know and i'm glad man i'm glad that people like are recognizing the fact that like bro my shit my shit fire man mm -hmm. my shit fire man like people will like they'll see eventually man like um a lot of people will be like oh you're you're, you're too humble but like i don't like to talk about this shit like i just want my music to speak for itself but like trust me it when it does comes to, though like, you're music, I, yeah i think mm. very highly of myself you know yeah. I think very very highly of myself you know hell yeah and like the my other favorite song i forget the title right now but the um it's when he came when eminem came out the music video for like the was it the vegas yeah. shooting have you seen that then when he has oh, like the, darkness that Royce was insane Oh, he that did? Was, yeah, Royce produced that shit. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah, that, that music video crazy. came out. Yeah, that was fucking crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Because that was a moment. You know, it's one of those songs that, like, you don't listen to, like, every day. But, like, when you go back, you just, like, can appreciate the fact that it's, like, so artistically done, you know? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's one of those. And, like, just that video. You got to watch it. Like, if somebody's going to, like, listen to Darkness, they should watch the video. They have to. That shit just, like, brings it home. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a twist, just like Stan or Bad Guy. Yeah. It's like a total twist. You're like, what, what is he talking about? And then you're like, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, man, it was crazy. Yeah. So, White Gold, what is some advice that you have for up-and-coming artists, creators, influencers? Um, man, first and foremost, be a good person, man. Be positive. Have genuine relationships and deal with people accordingly, man. Like, just be a good person. Um, for writers, I would say read books, man. Read books, you know, become a voracious reader. You know, make sure that you, you can fucking give words that are, like, not, you know, just everyday words, you know, and infuse them in your music if you can. If not, it'll give you at least perspective on how to approach certain things, right? Because there's, there's always a different way to say something, right? So, you know, just learning from people that are heralded and masters at their craft, like, doesn't hurt, you know? Um, but, yeah, like, primarily, man, it's all about just going with your gut, man, being real with yourself. If you, if you know you're not that dope, don't go in somebody's face being like, I'm dope, thinking <laughs> that you could swindle them. Because, you know, nine times out of ten, like, people... Are if you're hundred percent sure of yourself, people are sixty coming in, you know. And for the most part, it's a no versus a yes. Like, 
So you just got to keep building, keep building, keep working until it's undeniable. And you just like can open that door and just like slam open that door, just bust open that door and make it undeniable, man. And that shit takes time and just give yourself time and don't be too hard on yourself. Like enjoy, you know, people say enjoy the journey all the time. I know it's hard when you don't have no money to eat and you think music is your only way out. Like, I advise you to get a gig and get a job, you know, or try try and get a job or or try and do something that um, try and do something that is more tangible, like you know, sell products or something like that. Get into business or whatever. But if you're gonna make music, like make music, but like I want you to be free of music with the contingency, you know, because a lot of people. There's talented people, but they need money so bad that they like feel like they need to a certain type of content. They need certain type of this, and they need to compromise here and there because they want the money. You know, if you free yourself from that, boof, your your creativity will shoot through the roof, and that's what we need from most of these people. A lot of people are operating off the fact that they're broke and they're making music to try and make money. You know, I get it. You know, but it's like. If you can, like, try and do something else, and then make music your hobby until it's not your hobby anymore. Yeah. Hell yeah. And what's the easiest way for people to reach you? Um, Instagram, man. Instagram, black or gold music. I'm trying to get that shit. I'm trying to get white gold on there. I'm trying to get all that shit, man. It's so tough. Instagram is a fucking bitch mm. to try and like get all this stuff changed. The person hasn't. Um, posted anything for like 10 years bro same on twitter like the person white gold hasn't posted anything for 10 years i'm just give me the handle man it's so hard for people to find me yeah right yeah like there's so many people that are like yo i search and search for your name and like i couldn't find you you know now i finally find you because somebody you know it's Tag just like it would be so much easier you know i'd yeah. probably have like 50 60 000 followers if you know it was white gold. Come know? on, Instagram. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, fucking Instagram, man. Yeah. Well, we're working on that, man. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the NAS podcast with white gold. Hell yeah. There we go.